Good afternoon. My name is Santa Ono, and I am privileged to serve as the President and Vice Chancellor of the University of British Columbia. Please join us in the singing of our national anthem, O Canada, led by our University Marshal, Nancy Hermiston, Director of the Opera and Voice Program at the UBC School of Music. Please remove your caps. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Hermiston. We respectfully acknowledge the Silks Okanagan Nation and their peoples, in whose territory we stand and are gathered today. At this time, I would like to invite Amber Cardenas, member of the Okanagan Nation, to sing the Okanagan song.
Thank you, Amber. Thank you for coming to all six ceremonies. We really appreciate it. Let's give Amber another round of applause. We pause for a moment to give thanks, spiritual and temporal, for the blessings that we share in this wonderful world, this great nation, this blessed province, this splendid university, these proud students and their even prouder friends and families, we give thanks for this most special, momentous of occasions. Please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone. I've got a question for the graduates here. Are you ready to receive your degrees? Parents, grandparents, siblings, loved ones, are you ready to see them receive their degrees? Well, this is a big moment. I want to just give you some introductions uh, to people that are here to honor your graduate. First, uh, behind me you'll see a gentleman that is wearing black uh, gown, just like mine, but instead of silver stripes, has gold stripes. That is the Chancellor of the University. Let's hear it for Chancellor Lindsey Gordon. <laughs> to his right, you can see the Deputy Vice Chancellor and the Principal of the Okanagan campus, Deborah Buzzer. Let's hear it for her. <laughs> and to her right, you can see Ananya Mukherjee Reed, who is the Provost and Vice President Academic for the UBC Okanagan Campus. Let's hear it for her. You will see to my left, there will be a number of individuals wearing the school colors, blue and gold. They are members of the Board of Governors. These are volunteers that give dozens of hours of their time reading about the institution, thinking about the institution, really uh, working with the executive and making sure that we do everything that we can to support the faculty, students, and staff of the institution. Let's hear it for the Board of Governors of the University. And then you'll see a number of individuals on stage. Um, they might be deans or faculty members. You can see that they're not all matching. They have different kinds of regalia, that's what we call gowns, academic gowns, and they're all wearing uh, academic gowns, typically from the institution where they received their last degree. For some reason in academia we call it the terminal degree. Uh, and you can see that they're all different kinds of colors. You can see uh, one of the gentlemen is wearing purple and blue, I think that's western, is that right? And you might see somebody with uh, Red, white, and black, that's the University of Toronto. Red and green would be McGill. And so there are different kinds of gowns that represent uh, the doctoral gown, usually, of the institution where they receive the degree. In the back row over there, you can see a whole set of very handsome individuals that are wearing uh, blue and gold as a stole in the middle, and then they have maroon on both sides. Those are the official UBC doctoral gowns, and they will be receiving their doctoral degrees today. And all the graduates here, you can see they have uh, black gowns and they have a red stripe. That really signifies that they're members of the same faculty. Um, different faculties have different colors on um, outlining of their uh, hood uh, on their black gown. So that gives you some sort of an idea of who's here. We have, in addition to the governors, we have senators. Uh, we have faculty members that are directly uh, teaching your student, your graduate, soon to be. Staff members are here. Uh, alumni are here to welcome them into the ranks of alumni at UBC. Let's give all of them a round of applause for everything that they do. Let me just say it's an honor for me to be with you today to celebrate UBC's newest 
graduating class, the class of 2019. Let's hear it for them. Now, I know that you're excited. I know that you're excited. I, I loved your enthusiasm. Please do not hesitate to cheer on your graduate later today. I can tell you this is one of the best parts of our jobs here on the platform, and that is to participate in this joyful, momentous occasion. I'll tell you that we have watched your students, your graduate, as they have graced our campus, and have they, how they, as they have grown as individuals, and this is a moment that is just as meaningful for us as it, is, as it is for you. That's why we are here. That's why we as faculty members teach. That's why we wake up every morning. That's why the governors think about the institution is because it's all focused on you. And today is all about you and what you've achieved through hard work, determination, and moments of creative inspiration. Graduation is a time to imagine your future and the world to come. And when you think about the road ahead, we hope that you will gain perspective from where you have been. And we hope that when you do look back on your time at UBC, that you will do so with fondness. And then when you look ahead, we hope that you will see UBC very much part of your future. You see, you will always be welcome here. And we look forward to hearing about your personal and professional achievements as you build upon the foundation of your degree. We also hope to hear from you from this day forward. We hope to be able to engage with you as alumni as you travel forward to new adventures, to new corners of the globe. There are now over 350,000 living alumni of UBC, and they're scattered all over the world. And one of my joys and my privileges is to travel the world and to bring UBC to you wherever you might be. And so graduates, when you actually hear from us by email with an invitation to come to an event, please do come. You'll be able to stay connected with your alma mater. You'll hear from faculty and current students. And it's really a wonderful way to remain part of this extraordinary community. As you begin a new stage in your life and experience, you can be confident of one thing. And we are absolutely confident of this because of everything that you have accomplished while you're here. You can be confident that you can and that you will make a difference. If you think about it, the graduates have, who have gone before you are extraordinary. Three of them have served as Prime Minister of Canada, including the incumbent. And we also have graduates who have become Supreme Court Justices, Nobel Laureates, uh, scholars in, in, in leading scholars in almost every field of, uh, of academic uh, uh, scholarship. You possess, like them, the knowledge and skills that are conferred by an excellent education. But there's something that is really at the core of UBC that I want to remind you of. On Imagine Day and in Create here in the Okanagan, this is one of the things that we really talk about, something which is part of the ethos of this institution. I can hear there's a young man over here who might, might want to enter UBC early. Let's hear it for the young man in, in the middle over here. Let's hear it for him. In his address to UBC's very first graduating class in, in 1916, UBC's very first president, Frank Westbrook, encouraged students to, to strive to make the world a better place in which to live, not just in terms of their families and their loved ones, but to really focus on, on mobilizing their skills and their gifts and their efforts and passions to help others, individuals that they might not even see. And that's something that we repeat every single year as we welcome new students to the institution, and it's what we end with um, as an institution on your graduation day. Today, 103 years later, we echo those same remarks from President Westbrook. We believe firmly that each and every one of you has the capacity and skill to succeed and to make the world a better place in your own unique way. Now, about three weeks ago, one of you, a graduating senior, made an appointment to see me and said, I just want to talk to you about 
life in the real world. And I asked him, don't you think that UBC is the real world? And he said, I'm not really sure. And I said to him, you'd be surprised how similar UBC is to the real world. You know, there are some differences. When you leave UBC, you won't be in this uh, in amazing environment of people, many people around your age with, with great professors. Um, you'll be uh, some, maybe moving into a job or into a graduate professional school. Uh, you might be moving to a different kind of uh, geographical location. Um, I will admit that things will change, but if you think for a moment about what UBC is, if you think about both campuses, it's a community that's the size of Nanaimo. It's, it's a large town, it, or it's a small city, and it's extraordinarily diverse. If you think about the things that faculty, staff, and students here think about, what they uh, perform scholarship or research on, the different kinds of ideas and, and cultures that are represented within this community, it really is a microcosm of the real world. And we believe, truly, that uh, it prepares you well for life in the real world. Nevertheless, he said, I still want to ask you for some advice. Some advice that perhaps I can bring with me from this day forward. And so I said, since you've asked me twice, I'll actually try to respond to the best of my ability. And I felt it was only fair to share that same advice with you that I shared with this one student. So this is what I said. I said, I'll be honest. After graduation, you will have good times and bad. It's unavoidable. I have yet to meet a human being that has only good days. May you have many more good days than bad. But when life is challenging, when you most need advice, here's my advice. If your spirits are down, try this. And I ask each and every one of you, whether you're a graduating student or family member or friend or sibling, to just humor me and try to play along with what I'm going to try to do. And that's this. I'm going to speak about a number of different vignettes. I'd like to ask uh, you to just close your eyes and think back to the very first time you ever experienced something new. I'm going to mention a number of different scenarios that have probably happened in your lives and just try to think back to, to where you were then. Try to transport yourself to where you were back then and try and feel what you felt then. Remember, for example, the very first time your mom or your dad or a caretaker dropped you off at school. I'm not talking about kindergarten, I'm talking about real school, grade one. You remember that day? I was pretty scared. I remember having to say goodbye for several hours and I didn't know anybody in my first grade class. Remember how the night before, the weekend before, you went to a stationery or to, to something like, oh, like a Walmart or something like that, and you had that long list that you got in advance, so you had to get so, so many spiral notebooks and binders and loose leaf paper and all those sorts of things, and, and then you splurged and you told your mom that you really needed to have this multicolored pen and scissors and rulers and whatever that thing was to draw circles. Remember those things? Remember how you felt that first day? Your parents, your grandparents probably will never forget you probably got some new clothes and your mom and dad probably made sure that your hair was combed just right as you went off to your first day of school. They probably have photographs of you still that first day of school. Remember the first time you went swimming in a pool before you knew how to swim? There was usually somebody with you. The first time you actually did it without a flotation device, I'll never forget because it was in a summer party that I tried to swim by myself. There were too many people. There was a party going on that uh, nobody was really watching. And I, I knew I could swim because I, I, I could sort of swim at the Y, but I went to this party and, and, I, and I jumped into the deep end and I learned pretty quick I didn't know how to swim. My older brother threw out a flotation device and thanks to him, because I was looking up at the sky through the water trying to stay above water 
and I didn't know how to swim and my brother saved my life. Hopefully your memories aren't just like that. <laughs> but you probably remember the first time you swim. Remember the first time maybe that you went to a, to a hockey game, NHL hockey game. For me, it was the forum in Montreal where the Habs played. I never really watched an NHL game before. I was amazed at this temple, the hockey, and how large it was and how small everybody looked on the ice below. But I was amazed at how quickly the players would zip along the ice and how they would ram into each other and to the plexiglass around the ice rink and, and the sound of the hockey stick hitting the puck and hitting the goal post. Um, Patrick Roy was a rookie uh, goalie uh, for the Canadians that year and they went on to win the Stanley Cup. I'll never forget that, what it felt like to be in the city when the team actually wins the Stanley Cup. Think about the first fireworks display that you ever experienced. You're probably a little kid, probably your older sibling or mom or dad. Maybe they had you on, on their shoulders. It was way past your bedtime. You knew something was special. Everybody was excited. But remember how scared you were when that first firework exploded above. How mesmerized you were to see shimmering lights above in the summer sky. Think back, perhaps, because of your training. Maybe you were like me. I wanted to see how an electric alarm clock worked. And I opened it up with a screwdriver still plugged in. <laughs> I remember how I, I was just sort of taking that screwdriver, this metal screwdriver, and poking around at these wires. And suddenly there was this huge flash. And this huge piece of melt, melted uh, metal or something like that, probably solder, I don't know, just jumped across the the wood table below and left burn, my burning marks along the way. Or the time that uh, I had a chemistry set in my bedroom and I wanted to see what would happen if the Bunsen burner, if I pushed the, uh, the button on the Lysol can and it became a flamethrower. Do you remember things like that? You probably, uh, maybe you didn't do things like that. <laughs> Think back to the first time you rode a bike without training wheels. Remember how proud you were as you looked on looked at your mom and dad cheering you on. They'll never forget the first time you rode a bicycle without training wheels. Think back to the first time you looked out the window of a jet plane or witnessed the majesty of the Grand Canyon or the Niagara Falls, the Canadian side, of course. Or if you're a scuba diver or if you uh, snorkel, remember about the first time that that you saw the stunning biodiversity of a coral reef, or if you like to actually go through rainforest. Remember the first time you went through a rainforest. The reason why I'm going through these vignettes, there's two, two reasons I'm doing it. One is, if you think about life, these special moments, these memories, of first times. For example, today, your graduation day, in aggregate, as you get older, will become more and more meaningful. They define you as a person. That's why people have photo albums. That's why people will look back at old home videos. That's why you look at Facebook many years ago. Because it is the story of your life. Try and remember your sense of awe, your look of wide-eyed amazement at the wonders of the world. Reliving those moments will likely bring a smile to your face, sunshine to a cloudy day. But beyond looking back, this is why this is, is advice. My advice to you is to always look forward to new firsts, to never ever lose that sense of adventure, that sense of wonder. When the world does seem drab, as if everything is monochrome, or as if you're listening to something in mono, that's the precise moment to push beyond your limits, to experience anew something you've never experienced before. The reason why I walked you through these different vignettes to try to get you to re remember how you felt the first time you did those things is because those are the things that define who you are. They define your values. They actually are your life story. 
So on those moments where you are perhaps a little bit down, push beyond your limits to experience anew the diversity of colors in this world, diversity of people, the diversity of ideas and cultures, the magic of the world in stereo. You see, the sooner you realize that the bucket list of things to do in this world is infinite, the sooner you will realize that there is an endless list of first times for you, endless opportunity to view the world with childlike wonder, and never apologize for being childlike, because it is the secret of being forever young. If you do this, graduates, you will live a rich and fulfilling life. Godspeed, stay in touch. We will be rooting for you every step of the way. Congratulations, class of 2019. Thank you very much, Mr. President. My name is Deborah Buzzard. I have the pleasure of serving as the Deputy Vice Chancellor and Principal of the Okanagan campus of the University of British Columbia. To the graduating class of 2019, congratulations to every one of you. Bravo. Your graduation today marks significant personal achievements. You have professional skills, you've learned to study, you've learned to be persistent, but a UBC degree doesn't just qualify you for a job, give you a professional qualification. Much more importantly, it prepares you to live a thoughtful life, a life of perception and insight, and in this age of fake news and loud conversations, a life of rationality. It gives you, in other words, the intellectual tools to flourish wherever you may go from here. And as I look at you, this year's graduating class, I'm struck by your collective power as a force for positive change in the world. And yes, there is much to be done. But I want to give you a concrete example of what you have already done. Now, many of you who are graduating today were already here in 2014. And you may remember a student union run referendum under the heading More Library, led by the student union executive of the day and class leaders from all of the course unions and our librarian, Heather Berenger. You may remember how short of study space this campus has been. And the referendum was to ask you all to agree to contribute $75 a year to combine over time to provide a $10 million gift to the university to build more library. You voted in that referendum overwhelmingly in favor of making that gift. You voted knowing that it was very unlikely that you would see those facilities in your time here. Yet you had the vision collectively and individually the commitment to recognize there was a need, there was something that could be done and that collectively you had the power to change this campus for the better, forever, for all students going forward. And you did it, as I say, knowing that you were very unlikely to benefit from it. I'd like to ask for a round of applause for the incredible generosity of our students. Now you actually are the first class to luck out and to actually be able to use that new building because it opened in January. You may even have had a class or two in there, although I think not as upper year students. But you have benefited from the study space, from those wonderful new little rooms which you can book to work on a class project, 
where you can study with others, to quiet spaces, to even desks where you can cycle or walk while studying, and all in an amazing, very comfortable new facility designed, built, and conceived by the students of this university. It's a remarkable thing you have done. I should note that the federal and provincial governments were so impressed by your gift, which is a unique kind of gift in Canada of a university student group to an academic building, that both levels of government matched your funding and contributed another $25 million to build the beautiful Commons building. And for parents, if you haven't had a chance to have a look at it, just see what your students have done. It's an amazing thing. It is truly paying it forward. I give you that example because there are many, many issues in this world that you can change. And the way that you have approached this is to individually agree and to collectively make it happen, knowing that you yourselves might not benefit, truly paying it forward. You are already an exceptional class of change makers. And I personally thank you for that. Graduation doesn't mean goodbye. As our president has said, when you leave here, you will always be a member of UBC. And on September the 28th, it's a weekend, UBC Okanagan will be hosting our second homecoming, and we absolutely invite you all back to come and help celebrate and come back for the very first time as alumni to your campus. We know that you are going out into an extraordinarily rapidly changing world with new opportunities, new challenges, and what seem in some areas like intractable global competition global problems. We have absolute confidence that you have the capacities to make change. You know, we talk about UBC as a great university, and it is. It has an extraordinary reputation. What is it that makes a university great? The most significant thing is, in fact, the impact of the lives and the work of our graduates. And that is you. And on behalf of the University of British Columbia and everyone here in the Okanagan campus, I wish you congratulations and every success as you go forward. Well done, class of 2019. I am pleased at this time to call upon Jessica Rempel, member of the graduating class, to make remarks. Jessica. Thank you, Dr. Buzzard. <sighs> Mr. Chancellor, honored guests, and fellow graduates, my name is Jessica Rempel, and I am incredibly honored to be speaking to you today on behalf of the graduating class. Let me start off by saying to the graduating class of 2019, congratulations. We finally did it. <laughs> and to everyone else that is here to celebrate us today, our parents, spouses, mentors, aunts, uncles, siblings, and friends, we are honored to have you here. You have been our mental, emotional, and financial support over the past four years. Or maybe more, I don't know, we're not counting. Truly though, many of you have made immense sacrifices so we could be here today. And on behalf of the graduating class, I want to sincerely thank you for everything that you've done for us. And also to the professors, TAs, lab techs, and advising committee in the School of Engineering. You have dedicated so much more than just your time in teaching. You truly cared about our success and pushed us towards excellence. You might not have made it easy for us, that's for sure, but you gave us grace when we needed it. And most importantly, you provided pizza for us during exam jams and competitions. So for that, we are extremely thankful. And now, to the graduates. We are a prestigious faculty. 
a class full of intellects and world changers, celebrated for our innovation, design, and leadership. We have studiously spent thousands of hours in lecture, putting literal blood, sweat, and tears into our projects, and I couldn't even begin to count the hours of sleep we've lost to studying. But being great students isn't the only thing we've offered this university. We are also a faculty notorious for our passion, for our exuberance, enthusiasm, and even rowdiness at times. People know us by this. We have perfectly balanced the work hard, play hard lifestyle, and I think this is a great thing. We sing Sweet Caroline at the top of our lungs on a Friday night, and the next day, we build race cars and hovercrafts. We find a way to turn a project to build a motor from scratch into an opportunity to build a martini mixer. We 3D print our beer glasses, and everything else for that matter. And we convince our professors to get beers and burgers with us to support a fundraiser. All this to say, I think we are officially the well-rounded students that UBC can be proud of. On behalf of alumni UBC, I am honored to welcome you into the alumni family. You now belong to a community of changemakers and leaders that is more than 350,000 strong. Graduates like you who are making to, looking to make a positive difference in this world. I'd like to remind you to visit the alumni welcome tent after our ceremony and see what it means to be a new member of the alumni family. To conclude, I would like to charge you with this. Let's continue being people notorious for both our passion and our intellect setting examples of excellence in our workplace and with our families, having enthusiasm to innovate solutions that will shape our future. No doubt, we will forget the Bernoulli equation and maybe even the chain rule, but I am confident we will never forget the community we found here, the friendships we forged, and the time the professors invested in us. In this class, we found a niche of people we can relate to and aspire to be like. Having the opportunity to study and build relationships with so many of you, and now to be speaking to you all, is the highest honor I could imagine. I am forever grateful for everything this university has offered me. And so, to the School of Engineering graduating class of 2019, be proud of your accomplishments because they were well deserved and well done. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. I have to say, uh, I know you've had a good time at the university, and you've surprisingly escaped my attention in doing so. <laughs> but I, I hear, I hear stuff. Uh, I will now uh, invite Dr. Ananya Mukherjee Reed, Provost and Vice President, Academic at the Okanagan, to introduce the University of British Columbia's Killam Teaching Prize. The Killam Teaching Prize is made possible from a generous endowment provided by Dorothy and Isaac Walton Killam. Recipients of the award are chosen from faculty who have been nominated by their colleagues, students, and alumni in recognition of their excellent teaching. The 2019 Killam Teaching Prize for UBC Okanagan goes to Dr. Jonathan Holtzman, Professor of Electrical Engineering. Dr. Holzman is known for his exceptional ability to communicate complex concepts effectively and in ways that support all learners. He consistently receives outstanding reviews in teaching effectiveness and strives to create a learning environment that encourages student engagement and enhances students' experiences in the classroom. His lectures are highly interactive with class time focused on discussing, designing, and problem solving. Dr. Holzman supervises one of the largest research groups of undergraduate students in the School of Engineering. Many students have attested to the importance of this guidance as they navigate their academic program and professional careers. Dr. Holzman has been actively involved in curriculum improvement, program development, and accreditation. 
He played an instrumental role in the design of new program options for students, such as the pre-med alternative path and the minors in computer science and management. Dr. Holzman's passion for his discipline is reflected in his commitment to outreach programs that promote engineering throughout the community, such as the Stewards in Engineering Education Program for high school students. He was also a key contributor to the development of the Electronics Engineering Technology Bridge Program with Okanagan College and assisted in the launch of the IEEE chapter at the Okanagan campus. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Jonathan Holzman. And I add my congratulations to a wonderful colleague and professor, Jonathan. And now, will the candidates for degrees please rise? That's you. Yeah. Mr. Chancellor. I have the pleasure of presenting the candidates for degrees who have successfully completed their studies and fulfilled the condition that the university has set for them. The Okanagan Senate of this university recommends them to you for the degrees that will be announced by a representative of the faculties. As each degree is officially conferred, the dean of the faculty and in the case of graduate students, the Dean of the College of Graduate Studies will congratulate the student. Ian McDougall and Puria Marabi, members of the alumni community, will welcome each student to the Alumni Association and present them with the alumni handbook. The candidates will please be seated. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Munir Ahmad. Dr. Ahmad developed a method of detection and quantification of six pharmaceuticals toxic to living organisms and the environment. He applied this method to analyze samples from bench scale reactors. The result of his findings suggested a two-stage digestion treatment capable of degrad degrading harmful pharmaceuticals. Dr. Ahmad. Keith Joseph O.Y. Duheim. Dr. Duheim examined the perceived threat of contamination to surface drinking water sources where the parasite cryptosporidium is present from the feces of grazing cattle. His research verifies that grazing cattle in British Columbia pose a minimal threat to human health for cryptosporidium use. He verified that the implementation of best management practices test piloted in BC interior community watersheds prevents contamination and mitigates the potential threat to human health. His analysis of historical incidences in British Columbia also revealed no connection between grazing cattle in community watersheds and cryptospore uses in human population they serve. Thank you. Dr. Duheim. <laughs> Sayed Farhad Faghihi. Dr. Faghihi improved road safety analysis by applying computational techniques inspired by networks of biological neurons, wherein the neurons are able to perform complex calculations. Dr. Faghihi. <laughs> Navid Hosseini Fard. Dr. Hosseini Fard developed a comprehensive sustainability assessment framework for net zero buildings. The framework covers the complete lifespan of buildings and assesses how a building can become self-sufficient by using local natural resources. The framework also provides a decision support to various building stakeholders in the design stage. Dr. Hosseini Fard. <laughs> Anas Salem Issa. Dr. Issa developed and patented a smart bracing system to reduce seismic damages and keep structures serviceable after an earthquake. Dr. Issa. <laughs> Poppy Siddiqua. 
Dr. Siddiqo explored the nature of the electron transport that occurs within the wartzite and zinc blended, uh, blended phases of gallium nitride and indium nitride, materials recognized as having great potential for future device applications. The results of this research could influence the direction of this field of research and provide an analytical framework within which devices fabricated from these materials may be designed and optimized. Dr. Siddiqo. Tyler Alexander Davis. Dr. Davis's research focused on the development of next generation automotive alloys. He made scientific contributions on how to enhance the performance of magnesium alloys. Dr. Davis's research focused on making the alloys stronger, more durable, and readily useful for industrial applications. Dr. Davis. <laughs> Hassan Iqbal. Dr. Iqbal developed an innovative framework to assess oil and gas pipelines integrity management and safety culture and maturity levels. In his research, he developed a risk-based benchmarking method for oil and gas regulators to monitor continuous performance improvement of pipeline integrity management programs. The results of his research are beneficial to oil and gas regulators across Canada and the world. Dr. Iqbal. Hiroshi Paramudita Karunula Tilaka. Dr. Karunula Tilaka integrated life cycle thinking with risk based decision making for decentralized energy systems. This decision support framework assists municipalities and community developers with optimal planning of net zero energy systems, considering the full project life cycle. Her research has a direct impact on Canada's climate action plan and represents a significant step forward to ensure energy security for communities. Dr. Kanula Tilaka. Nima Moalemi. Dr. Moalemi studied how changes in pipe diameter affects flow hydrodynamics. Using computational fluid mechanics, he developed a tool to predict flow behavior in both sudden and gradual pipe expansions. Dr. Moalemi's research also shows the level of mixing and unsteadiness in the flow can be improved by adding transverse jets into the flow. Dr. Moalemi. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor. I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Master of Applied Science. Bruno Carneiro. <laughs> M.D. Arman Chathuri. <laughs> Derek Emsley. <laughs> Shahnawaz Khan. Bita Naziab. <laughs> Priscilla Nunes Munes Barreto. <laughs> Curtis Penson. <laughs> Sareen Raj Pakrell. <laughs> Kishore Tamanna. Ashraf Ahasan. <laughs> Jennifer Elam. <laughs> Nabir Jawad. <laughs> Jun Yuan Leng. <laughs> Shua Lil. Fang Shi. <laughs> Suzanne Vengren. <laughs> Maytham Amere. <laughs> Sayyid Tanjit Hussain. Levy Charles Lafortune. <laughs> Sebastian Camilo Lemus Fonseca. <laughs> Mohammad Mehdi Masumi. <laughs> Mahyar Mohaqq Montazeri.
Usama and Al Muhammad. Marie Lynn Reed. Ronak Wahed Mohammad Qasem Blue. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Master of Engineering. Ayesha Islami. Gurbik Singh Kera. Anne Mary Babu Vithayathi. Azwada Arman. Damilola Ibibuno Efi Abidakun. Karthik Balaji. Akshay Dewan. Sai Patrick Pendley. Gurasi Sekon. Hani Sharma. Gang Jot Singh Sidhu. Chinmaya Thakur. Tanya Thakur. Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Applied Science. Muhammad Karim Al-Shel. Braden Class Alexander. Cameron Daniel Barnes. Dawson Barnes. Carly B. Croft. Amita Baharabar. Ryan Chillett. Brody Cooch. Juliana Davis. Benjamin Delora. Brett Deppner. Jessica Dunn. Darian Jacob Falk. Wayne Hartley Hoffman. Brayden Harris. Matthew Henry. Jennifer Ann Hughes. Arpen Kendola. Dylan Kennedy. Love Joel Kak. Nelson Lee Liang. Kalentia Leshore. Simon Reed Lisuk. Jelly Lee. Yuan Lee. Yuan Yuan Lee. Yuning Liu. Yuning Liu. Cameron McDermott. Sydney McLean. 
Andrew Mercer. Gabriel J. Musgrave. Jason Edward Nobrega. Cody Robert Pepper. Sonia Ferrand. Katerina Julia Reed. Eric Russell Sandberg. Danny Santano. Robert Sims. Peter Smith. John Kenneth Stevens. Jasmine Takor. Kyle Matthew Thomas. Mason Van Vliet. Pamela Marie Visay. Lok Yan Wong. Bo Cheng Wu. Dustin Yankee. Ka Long Yu. Noah Benjamin Zanetti. Terry Jung. Joshua D. San Hua. Muhammad Salama Abu Zaid. Zachary James Andrews. Nolan Bergen. Michael Bose. Chris Rod Singh Barar. Chia Chi Chang. Garrett Creasy. Arthur Alexander Dabrowski. Cole Wellesley Jonathan Daniels. Mustafa El Nagar. Eric James Gates. Ilya Royal Hitrovsky. <laughs> Trinik Jane. <laughs> Chase Dean Jensen. <laughs> Abbas Ali Mohammad Kermali. <laughs> Cole Lang. Jared Lucas. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the pleasure of presenting you the University of British Columbia Medal in Engineering Head of the Graduating Class, nine, Ethan McCoyan. <laughs> Kevin John Mingi. Brett Philip Moore. <laughs> Kyle Nanagat. <laughs> Joel Andrew Van Schmidt. <laughs> Nicholas Philipson. 
Ramiz Udin Ghazi. Andrew Reed. Jacques Russo. Tahmid Saad. Iman Sandu. Sophia Shreni. Lucas Tetzel. Logan Tarasov. David Vasiliev. <laughs> Nicholas Wapi. <laughs> Kyle Warner. <laughs> Justin Waterstone. <laughs> Sydney Burton White. Kurt Yushulchen Min. <laughs> Kristen Mitchell Allen. <laughs> Ashton Gibbs. <laughs> Yi Hao Leo. <laughs> Michael Spout. Apeje David Afancho. <laughs> Haider Al Brahim. <laughs> Bradley Anselmo. <laughs> Colin Bach. <laughs> Matthew Alexander Alves Parata. <laughs> Kayla Bruce Adam Campbell Andrew Candeloro Michael Carrigan Angel Castillo. Caitlin Cavalier. Mark Cave. Rufi Chang. Flip Croto. David Dawson. <laughs> Niels Deveris. <laughs> Der Fox Elliot Derek. <laughs> Jackson Mitchell Dimnick. Kianan Iftuvshevsky. <laughs> Steven Iwunchia. <laughs> David Talk Folk. <laughs> Dexter Getty. <laughs> Parm Paul Singil. McLaw Douglas Grant. <laughs> Muhammad Hadi. <laughs> Shane Holler. <laughs> Mason Carl Hample. <laughs> Fang Gyu Cole. Kale 
Huber. Jamie Kautic. Kevin Kerr. Eugene Kim. Jonathan Cobalt. Matthew Kramer. Chloe Lang. Scott Robert Lapp. Christopher David Escalamon. Chan Ho Leong. Kyle Lesowe. Graham Bruce McCoyley. Stuart Douglas McDonald. Alexander James McKinder. Elizabeth Martel. Owen Rodney Martin. Kensky Matsuda. Callum Thomas McDougall. John Liam McInerary. Noah McIntosh. Alicia McLean. Chase McLeod. Aishish McCani. Jesse Morales. Kevin Nishi. Intisar Noor. Watokini David Olawajui Gibi. Alexander Nelson Paul Choco. Mitchell Pearson. Austin PJ. Neil Prout. Karen Prince Singh Rai. Jessica Rempel. <laughs> Keaton Rock. Evan Road. Alex Russell. Robbie McKenzie Russell. Samuel Ruziki. <laughs> Baba Karsal. <laughs> Kyle Schubert. <laughs> Jordan Scott. <laughs> Brandon Seward. Kunal Sharma. <laughs> Diyad Din Sharif. <laughs> Alex Stefan. <laughs> Marwan Hisham Taha. <laughs> Campbell Jericho Tolentino.
Gunnar Vahesor Brock. William James White. Maxwell Winston Lee. Rory Lee Winston Lee. Dustin Wogamoth. Bradley Young. Zijiang Zhao. Emily Elizabeth Earl. Kai Neubauer. Kai Planondon. Joel Prout. Kia Tan. Nikita Taylor. graduates please rise. For those graduates who've crossed the stage today, as well as those who are unable to make today's ceremony, I hereby admit you to the convocation of UBC. Congratulations. As Chancellor, it's been my privilege and great honor to preside over today's ceremony. You've all invested a huge amount of hard work, determination, focus to get and reach this milestone in your life, your graduation. You've had a lot of support along the way, family, friends, peers, and many of those uh, people are in this room today to celebrate with you. So I think this would be a great moment to turn around and show your appreciation for their support. Let's give them a huge round of applause. And how about a big round of applause for the faculty on stage for all their support. So having crossed this stage today, you are now members of the Convocation of UBC. And you are in good company. Since 1916, UBC has been granting degrees and generations of students, just like you, have crossed a stage just like this one to receive their degrees. And they've gone on to help build our community and shape our society. As alumni, your relationship with UBC is beginning anew. 
and you can maintain your voice in the affairs of the university through your elected members of Senate, perhaps by mentoring one of today's students, or by participating in one of the many volunteer activities that UBC hosts both here at home and abroad. And as lifelong learners, you will always be welcome to come back here to take a course or two. Now, you might want to take a short break before you do that, but you will always be welcome to come back. And I do encourage you uh, to stay involved in the affairs of the university because you still have much to offer UBC, just as UBC still has much to offer you. So 2MS, uh, congratulations once again and please be seated. Before we close today's ceremony, and it is our last of two days, I would like to acknowledge all of those who've contributed to the success of the ceremonies that we've enjoyed, a total of six. I want to take this opportunity to thank our Chancellor, Lindsay Gordon, for presiding over today's ceremony, our Board of Governors members for joining us, and our President, Santa Ono, for being here for this special celebration. This is the last graduation ceremony of this season for UBC. Between them, the President and the Chancellor have now participated in 34 ceremonies. A remarkable achievement. I would also like to thank all the faculty and staff who have volunteered as marshals and ushers, and you have seen them around. They may have guided you to your seat. You may have been driven over here from a parking lot in one of the golf carts. All of those wonderful people have volunteered to help make this such a splendid day. The ceremonies simply wouldn't work without an army of volunteers. So please join me in recognizing them and everyone who played a role in helping to create memorable experience. And, of course, the splendid music that you have enjoyed, which has been uh, provided for us by the Okanagan Symphony Wind Ensemble, led by Dennis Colpitt. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, this brings our ceremony to a close. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed it all as much as I have and that you will join us for refreshments to be served in the courtyard immediately after the ceremony at the alumni tent. We request guests please to remain in your places until the academic procession have left the building. But before the procession, we have one more big moment. Parents and families, this is going to be a photo op. So get your cameras out and ready. It's the time-honored tradition known as the cap toss. Now some of you parents may have been dreaming of this for the lifetime of your student. I know our students have been looking forward to it probably since the day they arrived. You've been waiting for an opportunity to do this and it's once in your life and we are going to get it right. And you are engineers. And you are the last convocation of this week. You understand velocity. You understand momentum. The keys to a successful cap toss are synchronization and altitude. I will leave the altitude to you. You are the experts here. But to ensure that we are all in sync, and there is no premature decapitation. I will lead you with a prompt. Will the graduates please rise and prepare for the toss? Remove your caps, hold them in your hands, but no tossing yet. In a moment, I am going to wish you one final congratulations on behalf of the University of British Columbia. And when I say the word Columbia, that is your cue to toss your caps high in the air. And parents, 
that's your cue to start rolling the video, snapping photos. Is everyone ready? Okay, here we go. Mr. Chancellor, dignitaries, family and friends, please join me in congratulating once again the incredible, the amazing 2019 graduates of the University of British Columbia. Yeah.